Okay, uh, thanks for coming our presentations. Uh, I'm Yoshitake Kobayashi uh, from Toshiba. Uh, I'm, I'm leading a Linux, embedded Linux team in my company uh, to provide uh, uh, many products and uh, which relate on the uh, civil infrastructure systems. Thank you. Welcome also from my side. My name is Urs Gleim. I'm with Siemens. Oops, we seem to have a problem with the connection. Now it, now it works. Um, I have a similar role than, uh, than uh, Yoshi. So we also have a team, that's our logo, providing Linux for different industrial devices inside the company. And uh, we both together, we are founding members of the Civil Infrastructure Platform Project which is a Linux Foundation project. And today we want to give you an update what happened. Um, we called it industrial open so industrial grade open source base layer development. And I will start with a short introduction, setting the context, what is it about? So what is CIP? And uh, first of all, yeah, what is CIP? It's uh, compared to many other projects you see here on the conference, it's does not have the latest and greatest newest features. It's one, I think, it's the most conservative project uh, you will find on the conference. But nevertheless, um, it's one of the most important uh, projects of our civilization. So we will save the world at the end. And um, But seriously, what we are going to do is uh, we provide an open source base layer for embedded systems used in civil infrastructure systems. We work closely with the communities. We will see examples about this. Uh, what we are not, we are not a new Linux distribution. So it's much less. You will, after the talk, you will know what we are talking about. We are really starting bottom up here. And um, I would briefly start uh, explaining what kind of products and what kind of systems we target. And um, actually, you see all the systems on this slide. So the special thing about these systems is that mostly these systems are hidden. You don't see them, uh, but everybody expects that they are just working and providing our electricity, our water, our transportation. And um, we have some pretty typical product examples uh, which, are, which, which our companies provide. And uh, so starting from left to right, we have the, all the transportation systems doing the, the uh, track controls, controlling the vehicles, uh, up to ticket gates. We have energy systems, energy distribution, power generation, turbine control. Um, we have a lot of systems in the area of industry automation, um, controlling all the, the, the production lines uh, in the car manufacturers, for example. Um, here you see the CNC control machines. Uh, which are used, for example, at Foxconn for for doing the um, doing the, the the housing for for iPhones and other mobile phones, and uh, communication devices. We have healthcare products, building automation, um, and uh, al also uh, broadcasting devices. And if you look at all these products, so um, we will see later there are members like Hitachi, Toshiba, Siemens, and we all, all these companies have products in this area since the early 2000s, which are run by Linux. So you will find examples everywhere, and the oldest systems are more than 15 years old now. And uh, so we gained a lot of experience in using Linux and these kinds of systems. And um, there are also some issues. So um, the issues in those systems mainly is um, the long lifetime, the reliability, and more and more the security questions comes up. And um, to show you the difference between all the other developments, so if you look at automotive industry or other industries, um, we have different requirements. So these systems are long-term in the field. We have also a completely different uh, cycle, development cycle, and I show you one example um, how the typical lifetime is. So uh, this is a railway system which is still in use, which is more than 40 years old. 
So just imagine, look around all these embedded boards here on the conference and um, let's maybe meet in 40 years, which is 2057. Maybe the ELC is in Prague again and uh, then maybe we have a picture with the current board in the presentation. And uh, this is the lifetimes we have to think of. And if you look at the current uh, product development cycles, it really takes a long time. We have three to five years development time. We have, again, two to four years customer-specific and country-specific extensions, especially in the railway area. Uh, then we have all the safety certifications, authorizations on top. And each and every change takes a lot of effort to bring in, to do all the certifications again, for example. And um, this is the reason, combined with the fact that these systems will run for a really long time, from 25 years up to 50, 60 years in power plants, um, that you can maybe imagine that it's not an option to switch to the latest Linux kernel each and every year or every two years. And um, so we need different solutions for this. And actually, we already work in a different way inside the companies. And um, there's an additional factor which, which also influences uh, this direction. Uh, everybody talking is talking about IoT, industry is talking about industrial IoT. Uh, but, the, but the reason why we have to look at this now is we have a lot De more devices here close to what we call the field, so the sensors and actors. And here in the middle we have IoT gateways, we have edge devices. Most of them are run on uh, run Linux, and uh, the number of these devices massively increases. Um, and especially security-wise, it's not manageable if you have like 100 and different products with 100 and different Linux config uh, different Linux configurations on uh, running on them. And uh, so this really is a huge pull in the direction of, of harmonization and uh, to find a solution which is more sustainable here. So we have all these devices, especially in industry, people move functionality down from the cloud compared to traditional IoT uh, to these devices. And um, this is very important currently to, to, to all to, to set up these devices in a sustainable way um, and uh, otherwise the, the effort maintaining these systems will kill us. So the problems are summarized. We have to survive a very long time. We have industrial requirements, robustness, security, reliability. Um, and what we do here also in the project, pro project and we will go into the details uh, shortly, um, is nothing new because this was already done for years. But we did this in several companies, each company on its own. And um, we did this even multiple times for, um, for, for different products. So um, in several companies for several products. And that's why we said it's time to change something. And um, we looked about a way to organize this. We talked to our uh, competitors and, and all the people having the same problems and we, uh, we agreed that, um, that it, nobody buys these systems because we have a special Linux version in. It's just a requirement that we ensure the long-term maintenance. And uh, this is a perfect setup for a collaborative project. And uh, we decided to do this uh, under the umbrella of the Linux Foundation. So you, you might know there are other projects. You, you, if you go to the website, you will recognize the names and the logos. Uh, most of these projects focus on IT enterprise and cloud technologies. They have in common that a lot of companies back this, so uh, in terms of people and money. And um, this was the reason to say, okay, we need the old industry uh, collaborating in the same way, uh, focusing on long-term maintenance, industrial grade Linux stack, uh, and a close cooperation to all the other projects and, and uh, focusing a lot on upstream work. So what came out in April uh, 2016, which is one and a half years ago, um, we founded the civil infrastructure platform. Um, and 
The next slide gives a brief overview who is currently participating. This is Hitachi, Toshiba, Siemens, who have roughly the same product portfolio in many areas. Um, what we do is, so, so, and then we have Renesas as the first silicon vendor um, who uses the SIP platform as a, as a reference platform. We have CodeSync uh, with a lot of open source expertise and system software development expertise. We have Platform coming from the industrial IoT side. And all these companies provide, first of all, people participating in all the activities. Uh, but beside this, they also provide a little money, uh, which gives us the freedom to fund projects, related projects, to fund uh, maintainers, uh, and to really get this up to speed. And um, this is how these kind of projects work. And um, But what, what is maybe more interesting for you is um, what is done exactly, what is the actual work going on. Um, we started really bottom up. We started with the kernel uh, and uh, set up the what we call super long-term supported kernel. We agreed on a kernel version. We built up the infrastructure around this. Yoshi will go into the details. And now we are building this up bottom up. We add first packages, which are the uh, least common de denominator, which everybody needs. But we will see it's much less than a, than a distribution. And the idea is to evolve this over the years. So, um, to add successive step by step uh, additional packages and to really have then a common base layer which can be used by everyone. And with this, I would like to hand over to Yoshi, going into the details of the current activities. Okay, thanks, Bruce. Okay, um, oh, that's me. <laughs> okay, uh, let me describe. Uh, the current status of the CIP base layer development. The f at the first, uh, I would like to announce three stuff. The first one is CIP just released Bodat Desk. This is a CIP kernel testing environment made by uh, yeah, CIP project and CoSync. And that is our, uh, quite, uh, using uh, our Lava and kernel CI uh, features. So this is a kind of collaborative project for that. And next one is a CIP core is just launched. So we need to create a uh, base layer for uh, industrial grade systems. So CIP core is a first step to create our base layer. So I will describe the details in the later. And the last one is CIP just decided to take Debian as a CIP primary distributions. So the meaning of the primary distributions, uh, also I will describe it later. So our scope of activity is quite a variety of stuff. But uh, yeah, we need to uh, prioritize uh, some uh, technical topics for each. And yeah, when we launched, the CIP project, at the first, we uh, started to create a long-term support strategies, uh, which based on uh, yeah, stable kernels. Because long-term support is quite important, as Ruth mentions before, for our systems. And the second one is real-time. Uh, real-time is uh, quite, uh, most, uh, one of the most important features because most of controller need to support real-time features. And the uh, third one is testing automations, and that is a related to border desk. And finally, uh, we just announced a build environment as a, a CIP core project. So I will describe the details. Um, so the first one is kernel maintenance. We picked up the, uh, yeah, one kernel to maintain more than 10 years. And the second one is preemptivity, and the third one is testing. And then CIP core. So the details of the CIP SLTS kernel development, and this slide shows the details. So we picked up the Linux 4.4 .4 as a CIP super long-term support kernel. So this kernel is based on the uh, Linux stable tree. And uh, probably, uh, as you mentioned, uh, may know, 
Uh, Linux 4.4 is maintained, uh, maintenance is just extended to six years, and that was uh, announced by Greg Hartman. But uh, CIP needs to uh, have more longer term support, more than 10 years. So, uh, yeah, we decided the maintainer, uh, the Ben Hutching, uh, he's uh, uh, yeah, also famous person as a Debian kernel maintainer. So he has uh, experience to support uh, kernel for a long time. And the uh, latest CIP uh, kernel is just released on uh, last week. Um, yeah, this is the uh, latest status for the kernels. And when we create kernel, um, yeah, we have a quite important policy. The first one policy is a upstream fast policy. Um, without this policy, uh, I, we believe we cannot maintain the kernel for a long time. Because if we uh, have uh, some uh, local patches, um, it causes uh, serious regression issues in the future. So. This is why uh, we, create, uh, we have an upstream policy first. And then, yeah, uh, we currently uh, backported some features from upstream kernels. And we only focus on limited features because if we uh, backported a lot of stuff from the upstream kernel, it's also caused serious issues. And fortunately, in our use case, doesn't need to support a lot of new features because we are kind of a conservative project. And now uh, we have our, uh, some security features and also our board support packages from the upstream kernel. And to maintain the CIP kernel, uh, we have a good example here. So uh, we picked up the uh, stable uh, kernel and the button is a 4.4. So 4.4 is currently under maintained by uh, Greg Hartman, but our CIP uh, yeah, maintainer, Ben Hatching, also helping uh, them to review the patches. So recently, uh, this patch is submitted for a 4.4 stable review, but also uh, Ben reviewed uh, this patches. So this one line caused a memory leak so this kind of stuff uh, done by CIP to uh, make a stable kernel more stable. And probably, uh, yeah, in here, maybe uh, yeah, you also uh, creating a super long time survived systems. And maybe, uh, yeah, want to know the next CIP SLTS kernel versions. But uh, currently, uh, we focusing on 4.4 to maintain a super long term. But next, next version, uh, we just say approximately uh, two to three years. And yeah, will be happens maybe uh, next year or uh, year next. But at that time, we also uh, plan to pick up the uh, kernel version from the super, uh, stable kernel tree. Because otherwise, yeah, we just maintain uh, one kernel without any help. We would like to collaborate to the uh, stable kernel development. So, and we know um, some uh, chip vendor want to have uh, out of tree drivers uh, to support their board support packages. And in CIP, in general, uh, we can say all out of three drivers are not supported by CIP. But um, even that, it is also a useful uh, CIP kernel because um, most of the common part is maintained by CIP. And maybe a SOC vendor only uh, need to support uh, their uh, uh, device specific part for the super long term. Okay, so next one is a uh, print out key patch. Um, most of members in the industrial area want to support real time features. And currently, uh, real time patch is development uh, 
real-time Linux project. Um, we uh, picked up the real-time patch uh, from the uh, stable RT tree and also merge it to the CIP tree. So currently, uh, the CIP RT is under development and uh, not um, part of the uh, CIP official project yet, but um, soon uh, will be um, yeah become the CIP official uh, repo into the CIP official repository. So if you uh, want to uh, see the current development status, you can go to uh, GitHub state, uh, GitHub. And the most important is the CIP is just joined the Linux um, real time Linux project as a gold members. So we are directly helping their support. And we discussed about uh, stable RT maintenance uh, together with the uh, real time uh, Linux project. So yeah, if you want to uh, have uh, more information, so you can go to a Linux, real time Linux project page. So next one is a CIP testing. And this slide shows um, that the milestones for the CIP testing. At the beginning, we need to create uh, one testing environment, which can use uh, for the, not only a CIP members, but also a kernel developers. So we created a border desk uh, for single developer uh, to support, uh, to use the uh, testing environment on their, on top of the desk. And the next milestone is a CIP kernel testing. Uh, we start, we need to start uh, CIP kernel testing as soon as possible because uh, testing is uh, quite important for us. And currently uh, we are, uh, diff we, I think, uh, yeah, we are on this stage and trying to define the kernel testing more concretely. And yeah, CIP uh, uh, just announced uh, CIP testing environment for that desk version one is released. Um, so if you are uh, going to the, uh, this URL, you can find the details of the uh, border desk env environment. So there are a lot of um, documents available, uh, which include how to set up the border desk uh, for your use case, and also uh, what kind of uh, things can be done by a border desk. So this is uh, quite easy to use, and based on the uh, upstream project, uh, like a kernel CI and Lava 2. So this is also commonly used for the kernel developers. That's why we choose uh, this kind of stuff to include a border desk. And next step, uh, we also not, uh, want to collaborate with other testing for effort. For example, uh, automotive grade Linux also using uh, uh, kernel CI and Lava 2 uh, for their environment, for testing environment. So we would like to collaborate uh, to share the, uh, this kind of effort uh, with other uh, projects. So uh, next things we also uh, define, try to define the how test should like and also uh, how results should be shared. Uh, because sharing uh, the testing result is uh, important for the uh, kernel developers. So to recognize the regressions. So we would like to share uh, this testing result. So this kind of features will be added to the border desk in soon. And now I would like to say uh, CIP uh, decided uh, Debian as a CIP primary reference distribution. And the meaning of uh, reference, this uh, primary reference distribution is CIP would like to work with Debian to have a longer term support. Um, and also CIP will select a CIP core packages uh, from Debian packages. Because currently uh, Debian uh, have a long term support project inside the Debian project. And they currently have a five year support term but um, CIP requirement is, for example, more 10 years or more. So we would like to fill this kind of gaps 
to, by collaborating with uh, distributions. And CRP members are also interested in uh, Yocto project as a building systems. So Yocto project is a quite flexible uh, framework for us uh, to build a um, uh, yeah, CRP base layer. So the shape of the CIP uh, base layer is quite small at the beginning. As you can see in this list, there are, uh, yeah, I think are less than 10 packages here, which include the kernel itself. So we, like, we should have a, a kernel, of course, and uh, very basic uh, utilities and libraries and the security features and so on. So we yeah, usually uh, start, uh, as you said, uh, as you said, we start as minimum as possible. And this is uh, uh, yeah, our initial uh, candidate for the component set. So to define the uh, core component set, uh, we yeah, uh, almost concrete idea uh, as, as minimum as uh, possible, uh, but uh, defining the component version is quite difficult. That's why uh, we uh, we would like to collaborate with uh, uh, other distributions such as Debian. So, um, actually, a CIP core package development is uh, uh, started, and CIP core aims to provide a way to create and test uh, installable images. So this figure shows what, is, what will be done by CIP core. So CIP core uses, uh, of course, a CIP kernel and Debian source code or Debian build and pre build packages to create a minimal based systems. This is the concept of the CIP core. To create a minimum systems, uh, we use uh, Bitbreak or uh, Debian, binary, uh, Debian packaging systems. And currently, uh, we already started this project internally and already supported some uh, borders, which include Lunesas board and BigBone Black, uh, something like that. So the current status of CRP board development is based on the meta Debian layer, which called the Debian. So this uh, one uh, created uh, target systems uh, based on the Debian source code and the kernel source code. But we also would like to use uh, binaries because pre built binaries uh, accelerate, can accelerate our development time. So there are some uh, approaches already available. One, one is uh, Ether and the other one is Elbe. So this kind of effort also direct to consider to use uh, inside the CIP to build a uh, CIP core. And this slide shows the dif difference and also a common part of the um, yeah, currently available features. So as you can see, for example, either and Elbe using a Debian binary but uh, Debi using uh, source code. But Debi and Ether are using a bit break and something like that. So currently, these three projects also talking each other how to um, join, you know, how to merge their effort in together. Because all three projects based on Debian. So, this slide shows uh, gaps and common goals between Debian and CIP. So currently Debian support uh, five year support time. And, but we would like to extend um, to more than 10 years. And the other uh, possible option is uh, open source license compliance. Debian has a quite uh, nice uh, review process uh, to uh, have a license compliance, and they also uh, decide to use DEP5 format, uh, which is uh, very similar with SPDX, which are defined by Linux foundations. So if they uh, create a DEP5 
uh, adoptions, it's easy to generate the license information for each customized project. So we would like to exchange this kind of license review result, which we are already done internally. So this kind of effort can be done. And the other stuff uh, we are discussing is uh, functional safety or this kind, yeah, and year 2038 issues and security and so on. So this kind of uh, stuff just started the discussion, but this is, we know this kind of effort also uh, important for the other project. So we would like to collaborate with the other project. Uh, so this is my, uh, sorry, thank you. So let me, just two minutes, <laughs> let me just summarize um, wh what we heard. Uh, thanks, Yoshi. So uh, what should stick in your mind is, uh, CIP is the open source base layer for industry, at least uh, will be in the future. Um, we currently focus on kernel maintenance, including real-time support, testing, which is very important for us to build up a common test infrastructure to, to share the test results and to share the tests inside the project and also outside. Um, and uh, the third point was uh, the CIP core packages really starting bottom up with a minimal set which can be long term maintained which is much much more complicated than uh, just the kernel and, and the kernel is complicated enough. We will hear more in another talk, I will come to this in a, in a minute. Um, so uh, what we currently get on f as feedback, so um, we, we, we hit the right time to start this project. Uh, we, we have a very good feedback inside our companies and also outside. Um, we provide this base layer based on Linux, uh, this is clear. Um, we have big companies uh, backing this uh, and uh, with also a semiconductor company joining us with Renesas. Uh, this really pu pushed uh, this, hopefully others will join. Um, we have a close cooperation with, with other projects, Debian, Preemptor-T, um, we, we use Kernel CI, Lava, and also we don't reinvent the wheel, we, we try to bring together what is already there and adapt it to our needs. Um, we have a strong emphasis on tool change because we believe this is important to, to make this manageable at the end. Uh, and uh, we talked about the tests uh, a lot. Uh, and uh, last but not least, inside our companies uh, at uh, Toshiba, Siemens, Hitachi, uh, we get a strong traction. So we have a lot of products, we had a have a lot of business units. These companies are really big, so um, people are calling us and want to join these efforts, also company internally. Uh, so it's getting up to speed uh, as, f as, uh, as quickly as it's possible for these domains and, and these big companies. Uh, so everything takes a while, but we really see traction now. And um, I would uh, give you also uh, some hints on, on other talks so uh, and meetings. So after this meeting, there will be a CIP developers meeting, which is open for everybody. So everybody who's interested, please join. Uh, then later uh, this afternoon, uh, we have a we, we have a talk going more into the maintenance topic by Augustine and Ben, who are also here in the room. Uh, and um, last but not least, uh, we have a keynote by Jan, a colleague of mine who's also here uh, on Wednesday morning. Um, so please join us for the for the next talks. We also have a booth. Uh, you will find us on this uh, upper level. Uh, it looks like this, so you will recognize the logo. Um, you see some demos, some examples. We have uh, bought a desk demo between 3 and uh, 4.30. The, there is somebody giving demos, uh, so uh, have a look at this. And um, yeah, with this, we both thank you very much for attending, and um, now, uh, we are open for questions. <laughs> are you thinking about an XP platform as possible testing platform or something like that? Because they have definitely bigger grade 
of the temperatures and this kind of stuff, and they definitely have really nice BSPs. Um, of course, uh, in our industries, we use also NXP platforms, uh, but NXP currently is not yet a member. So we are focusing on the reference boards of the members currently. So maybe NXP is interested in joining us and... <laughs> There was another question. Uh, I have two questions actually, and uh, one is related to tool, one related to cybersecurity. Um, I, I work for AGL, so we don't have to keep our stuff for so long, but you know, for us 10 years is plenty enough. Uh, the first question about tools is, what is your strategy to allow to keep building old stuff on new PC? Uh, which is a problem I had in telecom 20 years ago where you have to rebuild a software which is 20 years ago but obviously the machine which was used to build it doesn't exist anymore and so you have a new one with a new tool. And, uh, especially if you build using uh, Debian tool which are not really cross compilation based, it's very difficult to rebuild the old tool and then quite often you cannot rebuild the old software. I've not seen anything on that. I would be interested to know what your vision and the second one related to cybersecurity. I have not seen anything about management of connectivity and uh, protocol stack and communications, which is going likely to be fairly difficult to keep static during 20 or 30 years because cybersecurity is going to hack it and likely you will have to change it. W what is your vision on how you're going to manage that? Let's maybe start with the tools. Uh, yeah, for the tools, yeah, we know the uh, hardware, uh, yeah, is quite a uh, fast uh, development, but uh, we would like to know, keep the uh, development tools as long as possible uh, based on using, uh, for example, uh, Docker or yeah, virtualization environment to able to reproduce the uh, uh, um, you know, building environment. So. This is a, actually currently uh, we are doing uh, to keep uh, inside the company, and but uh, it's all, uh, already uh, taking uh, more than five years. It works, but uh, not for we don't have experience for more than ten years yet. So, yeah, is it uh, answer to your questions? <laughs> yes, obviously we don't have an answer yet. <laughs> Yeah, we actually do the same as everybody does, uh, using VM images, archiving them, and um, so this at least ensures that we can reproduce the builds, and that we have. Uh, so we have to put in all dependencies and uh, can archive those. Regarding the uh, the connectivity question about the network stacks and uh, and protocols, um, it's not addressed in this project yet. So um, we, we cannot solve every pr all the problems at, at once, so uh, we decided to go step by step and start with the kernel, which is difficult enough. <laughs> and then, as I said, uh, at, at additional packages regarding the network stacks, uh, what, what is currently done is uh, to, we work on the update mechanisms to make this robust and secure uh, to be able to, to, to exchange the the upper layers in a robust way, but this isn't. It's on the list uh, uh, in this project on the on the yeah topic list, but it's uh, it's not addressed yet because we are uh, we have enough work with the existing topics already, so we go step by step. Uh, Stefan, working also on AGL, um, it's a good idea to try to build things for a long time. Uh, but the question immediately just after is, how do you upgrade your devices or whatever will use your distribution? Uh, because what we what we hit on AGL is that we may have multiple ways to upgrade the, 
uh, what's in the car, okay, and not only the, the IVI system, but also telematic system, gateways or whatever. Um, but we see that there is, there is no real full solution, uh, I mean, on the client side or, or the device side and the server side to handle millions of small devices or big cars. <laughs> but it's fact, it's the same for us. Uh, so do you envision something uh, that could be done at CIP level and could be reused by other projects as well? Or do you just plan first to, uh, as you said, for the kernel, just to try to stabilize the kernel and just try to use what exists? <laughs> Yeah, the, the answer is pretty much the same as, as before, uh, because um, yes, we also faced this problem. Um, we, we didn't put it in this project yet. Um, and there are solutions in the different companies already. Um, and uh, there are discussions and there are candidates to be moved also in this software stack then. Um, but as I said, uh, it's not on the list or it's not on the it's not decided today, maybe next year we can tell more about this, but we really want to set up a sustainable software stack and not put, not create a big software stack at the beginning, uh, just keep it manageable and that's uh, heavy enough at the beginning to, to start with kernel and some packages. Anything to add? Yeah, um, as I always said, uh, our concept is uh, just really provide a base layer. So to ex to use uh, for uh, any product, so they can extend the base layer to fit their use case. So this is our concept, basic concept. Maybe one thing that you can imagine how we use this also in the company. So there's this base layer provided by CIP. Then in many cases, there's a central unit uh, providing uh, additional functionality or additional packages uh, on top of this maintaining this company internally and then there are the different product units uh, who also put something on top so you have a three layer approach basically uh, if, if you just look at from the 10,000 feet view. Yeah, okay, last question. Last question. <laughs> I guess that your answer might be the same, but have you done any tests in the future? Because I've been doing builds in the future for reproducible builds, and we noticed that some keys expire, and if you build in 10 years, many keys will have expired of the software when you validate it. And have you tried building beyond 2038? Yoshi, have we? <laughs> Um, Jan, do you know? <laughs> okay, let's stick with it's a good point. So, thank you very much for attending. See you.